and I will love you, love you, love you, love you. Grateful, grateful, grateful. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's get some questions down. Uh, Amanda seemed lovely and sweet. Stuff about Asana. Asana, God, oh my God. For organization, most amazing platform. If you haven't um, checked it out, do so. Um, I have no affiliation. Don't get paid anything from them. Just love the product. Where do we go to find out how an ex exceptional resume? This is Donna CV. I can see some responses there to that. Yeah, best best place to start, your university careers office. Um, university careers services, honestly, are probably one of the most underutilized resources on campuses. Um, and they've got professionals who just do this day in, day out. So I would definitely start there and then just get on Google. Like you're gonna find a ton of awesome resources up on Google. Um, you know, the thing for me, about resumes and cover letters is what we've been talking about, about cutting through. Um, how do you make your resume pop out? Um, how do you make your cover letter pop out? Um, you know, do you design it? Do you, do you put some color on it? Do you put your photo on it? Do you um, use headlines and use bullet points and make it really readable? Yes, all of the above. Because that person that sits down to um, read, scan, whatever, you know, like hundreds of resumes, you need to grab their attention. And yes, there's software out there um, that you know, analyzes and looks for people that match certain skills and stuff like that. But fundamentally, the person who decides on do you get an interview, it's a human being. And that human being needs to have their attention captured. You know, so I put my glasses on. They're actually blue light glasses, but they're very large, aren't they? Okay. Um, careers departments, let's keep scrolling. LinkedIn Learning, someone's mentioned. Fabulous resource, definitely worth the price of premium. Um, and maybe it's 300 bucks a year. The other one for online learning also has career resources in it. Um, any of the online platforms, um, edX, Coursera, um, there's a bunch of those like Moot, M-O-O-T, Mass Online Open Courses. Um, they have lots of cheap and free resources. So yeah, go do that. Uh, somebody made a comment about interviewers already have a bias. Every interviewer has a bias. That's just a fact. And so what we're trying to do with this whole method is to create a bias which is in our favor. Okay, so yeah, a little bit manipulative, but you're trying to present yourself in the best light. That's why content is so effective because you get to take your strengths and you get to put them on a pedestal and put them in front of people. And that is what people are going to come back to in their minds when you sit in front of them. So that is why this is such a powerful method to take seriously. Love Dove, mullet. Maureen, mullet, what do you reckon? No. <laughs> do you think it would do me? Do you think it would suit me? <laughs> I just can't think stopping about things, uh, stop thinking about Tiger King, right? Can you see me? Like with the Tiger King mullet? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Well, there's a lot of stuff. Oh, the Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. I occasionally get that. Um, he sings much better than I do, that's for sure. Um, oh, Lisa, now this maybe is one of the questions that, that, that won you the, 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 the prize. How do we find out if an organization lives out its mission beyond the corporate window dressing? Yeah, there's a lot of it. Um, and that, that might take you to look under the hood a little bit to actually get in touch with people that work there. Um, I think I've seen I've seen a comment in there as well as I was scrolling. Oh, actually, I've lost my lost that thought. Um, sorry, Marine, back in the background, and she just said ask in the interview. Uh, you get a chance to um, ask in the interview, ask questions, and you should do so and be vigorous. But if you want to, you know, get in advance, talk to people who work there. Um, mostly, you'll find them on LinkedIn. You can connect with them as long as they're not a list. Just go to somebody who's like a junior who's been there for six months and say, hey, what's it like? And then an interview, my personal philosophy, an interview is always a two-way process. You are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. You know, they should be having to try and convince you that, you know, they're an awesome place to work because the best places to work, like, you know, they've got demand, Right. So you, you, that, or they're looking, for, they're like, why would you? So they should have to also prove themselves to you. It's always a two-way process. Oh, there's a bit of discussion here around people changing career paths a few times. Yes, 
absolutely. Um, there, there's a bit of a, a misleading statistic saying that you know people will change careers like a hundred times in in sixty years, um, because uh, I can't remember why that data was was a little bit misleading, um, but they basically taken it like you know people in the current generation you know a certain subset in this subset in this study that they did um you know had, had moved a number of times in their first 10 years of career and they extrapolated that across 60 years and said this now applies to everyone so i'd take a great take that with a grain of salt but yes more than ever people want to change career directions and change companies and you should you know work is always going to be a two-way process you are giving your most valuable asset your most valuable asset your time to that organization in return for money and in return for what else training um, career development profile building um, what other things are they giving you in exchange for your most valuable asset okay because if it's just money yeah okay you can find that somewhere else so the best companies are the ones that will be investing in giving you more than um, than just the paycheck. And feel, feel free to change. Feel free to change. Sense of purpose. Oh, yeah, good, good point. Um, and, and thanks to Maureen for that, for that contribution, which was actually part of the talk as well. But the most important thing for people who are happy uh, in their work is that they find a sense of purpose in the work that they do. Um, Maureen was telling me about our um, pest, in, pest, pest control guy who comes to our house a couple of times a year and like phew, sprays. Now like, okay, for me, that's just like spread and repeat. That's not that exciting. This guy is super happy and he loves what he does because he was saying to Maureen the last time that he was here, um, you know what? Uh, I love my job because I make people feel comfortable and secure in their own homes. He has a sense of purpose in what looks like just a pretty easy kind of job, not really that challenging. He has purpose in it and that makes him happy. So whatever job you're in, the main thing to be trying to strive for there is to find the sense of purpose. If you're, you know, if it's making money and that's your sense of purpose, awesome. If it's like creating influence, awesome. If you're helping people, awesome. Honours degree carries nowadays, it depends. If you want to get into research or work in a university, that can be important. You certainly will learn skills around how to research deeply. Those skills will be very valuable to you doing project work no matter where you end up. Hard to say uh, in, in just a short response. Oh, Zoe Williams, how did I get the content to the company? That hack, guys. Um, get on LinkedIn ad advertising. You can pick out the company you want to target. Like, you, you can go on there and you can say, I want to put this in front of everybody who works at Microsoft. I want to put this in front of everybody who works at UNICEF, in front of everybody who works at the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Here is my piece of content, a well-researched piece of content about um, you know, Sino-Australian relations in you know, 2020. Relevant, current, targeted does that look good i think so lisa cheryl sandberg love cheryl sandberg amazing plan b fantastic book matilda where is the balance between being too upfront and attracting attention always a really good question okay and when i talked in this speech about um creating content and making it very specific to the audience okay so that it it's designed to be that, 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 that magnet, right? It's designed to be the handshake that somebody will just, the right person will latch onto and everybody else will just walk past. So if you looked at my link, look at my LinkedIn feed, like pff, I'm posting tons of stuff there all the time. Um, but it's not all designed for everybody. Some stuff is designed to reach, you know, like 10% or five people, 10% of my audience or five people five of my followers, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the idea is that you post content that is specific and relevant to the, and valuable to the people that you wanna reach. And then you don't need to post it in very many places because the point isn't to be Gary Vaynerchuk and posting everywhere all the time uh, and like just 
trying to become massive, there is only one Gary V, and that's Gary V. That place is taken. So do you, and put your content where it's going to get seen by the people that are important to you, which is the whole point of like planning from the beginning, right? Know who you want to reach, and know that they're the right people. Um, I didn't do this with my career. No, like I just started working, right? And I wish I'd had that advice to actually pause and think, um, to to try and set some sort of set, set some sort of direction. Uh, there there was a comment about that 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 in here too that I that I saw, which was um, about like cutting yourself off from 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 different opportunities. The, the question is like, are you happy? Um, you know, when when you're early in your career, you're heading out of uni you don't know what you're heading into. You know, like any job probably looks as good as the next um, and, and you've got to start somewhere. That's fine. The question there, in my view, is like, at, at what point do you settle? Um, I have this expression which is like, the grass is always, the grass is literally always greener somewhere else. You can have the most freaking amazing life ever. There is somewhere which is greener. It's warmer or, you know, there's more fame or more money or you know, more beaches, whatever. There is somewhere that is greener. But it's pretty freaking green right here, yeah? So look for what's positive where you are and think like, is this, is this good enough? Is this good enough or should I be pushing myself further? Um, and if something doesn't seem right, you know, you're in a workplace and people are unhappy and everyone's just like, oh, it's Monday. And they're like, yeah, it's Friday, I gotta get out of here. Like, maybe that's a bad sign. <laughs> And maybe that's a cue (laughs) to look for something else. And that's okay. Okay? That is okay. Uh, Matilda, how do you show authority when you're a fresh grad? Keep it in perspective. Okay? Um, You've got to keep it in perspective. When you're in your early 20s, you're straight out of uni, you're not expected, in fact, quite the opposite, you're not expected to know, like, you know, revolution like yeah knowledge yes but no you're not supposed to have like 20 years of experience under your belt and be able to like pick up massive projects and take it forward so if you're doing something which is above the average you will stand out and i think that's relevant to any point in your career so if you're um straight out of uni and you're publishing a weekly blog on a topic which is relevant to your audience relevant to the people your professional audience the people you want to reach every week you're writing 500 words something topical, relevant, targeted, you're going to become an authority very quickly because ain't no other grads doing that. You see, self-restraint, I almost said the word, but ain't no one else doing that, right? So you, you can put yourself above everybody else very quickly. But the bar raises the further you get into your career. Like if you're 30, then maybe you need to look at other ways to stand out because other people by that stage have experience. So what are you doing which is extra and different that helps differentiate you. It's content. Um, and the thing that holds most people back on content is just like the kind of fear of rejection. Like, oh, I could never write an article and publish it. Yes, you can. Um, live stream. Like, I've just been live for like an hour and a half. Um, I can tell you, like, the first hundred live streams that I did, nobody showed up. Okay, great. I got a lot of practice before anyone started paying attention. So... Somebody said the next time is like fake it till you make it. Just keep keep doing it. Keep practicing, and eventually you'll improve your skills, and people will start to tune in. So, um, keep doing it. Do you have advice for how to straight up approach companies you're interested in, even if they don't have any relevant or open job listings? Um, that depends on how direct you want to be. Such a good question. Great question, Anastasia. Um, depends how upfront you want to be. Um, in my view, it's easier for somebody to say no when you haven't delivered them any value, right? So if you just call them up and be like, hey, I love what you do, Asana. Um, have you got any jobs? They'll be like, check the website. Gone. If you've engaged with that community in some way, if you've started to build some interactions with staff members, if you've started to build relevant content, if you've shared their stuff a lot, you're more likely to, um, to, to, to get an audience. Like to, to, and when I say audience, get somebody to listen to you. Um, as an example, one of the companies that I love, 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 love 
is a company called Social Media Examiner. Um, they're like the definitive source of information on social media marketing, um, which is what, you know, a lot of the stuff that you've learned today, that's stuff that I've learned from them and from other experts in that area, right? Um, but I love what they do. And so, not with any intention, but I've just promoted some of their stuff. You know, I share their things and I've, you know, done little videos when I was at their conference being like, oh, hey, look, it's like the... Um, you know, the CEO of Social Media Examiner, Mike, and like, let's talk and share this stuff. And you know what? Over, over time, like, um, I've gotten to know them a little bit. Um, and like, tiny trivial example, but when we had to close the company and my renewal for their like society was coming up and I just wrote to them and I said, guys, like, I love what you do, but I, I just can't afford this right now. I can't afford to renew for this year. Is there anything you can do to help me out? And they're like, we'll comp you for 12 months. Why? If I was just, a, you know, hadn't engaged with them at all, no chance. But because I'd given them some value, because I appreciated them, and I was grateful for them, they were happy to reciprocate, right? So it wasn't meant to be something, it wasn't planned, but it's just something that I did. And that's what you should do too. So if there's a company that you really love, talk about them. Just talk about them. Because companies love that kind of there's like, oh my God, there's this, suddenly there's this person over here that's, that's like talking about us all the time. Like, where did they come from? What, what, awesome. And then they'll appreciate you. And you don't even have to reach out to them to begin with. Just show them the love, okay? Any company worth their salt will be like, oh, hey, look, thank you so much for being such a great fan. What if the role you want is in government? I feel like creating online content or a video pitch wouldn't have much impact if that's the case. Really good question, okay? And I would put government in the same position as um, big organizations, like big companies, big businesses, big public institutions like universities. Like big organizations have very defined systems and processes about how they hire. But at the end of the day, it's a human-to-human -human interaction for you to get a job. The person who hires you is going to be a human who has the same biases, the same um, emotional reactions as you and me. It's not a machine. So if you consistently put out good content, you know, DFAT's a great example. Like you can consistently every single week and over time, you know, you manage to grow your audience with people who are, who are working inside DFAT um, and then you were to apply for something there, would it get you in? Maybe, maybe not, but will it help in that situation where people see your name in, on paper and they know, they, they have some mental availability of you that has incredible value, incredible, incredible value because you're not just a name on paper, you are much more a known entity. And when it comes to hiring, everybody would prefer to hire somebody that they, that's a known entity because otherwise it's just like a roll of the dice. Question and answer, I have an interview in two weeks. I'm planning on creating a presentation explaining why I'm a good fit for the company. Would you agree it's a fresh approach to an interview? I'm not sure if you mean they're like, you're going to put that out in advance and try to reach out to them in advance. Yes. Like, yes. Yes. Um, or if it's something that you deliver in the interview itself, yeah, you, you, you can do that too. The, the main thing is to demonstrate that you have a level of care or a level of interest that is above the normal. Like you are prepared to go on above and beyond to get this job and you will deliver above and beyond you know, for this job because you have alignment. Great, this company, you guys got to do exactly what I want to do. You know, I'm passionate about it. Here's how I can demonstrate it. Um, that's, that's very, very persuasive. Very persuasive. I've done one TikTok. One whole TikTok. You'll find it at A Life That Travels. It's about toilet paper. That's all I'm going to say. Sam Chung, as an NCP scholar, I don't know how to create content that is political, e.g. am I allowed to comment on Black Lives Matter movement or is it a conflict of interest as an NCP scholar? Are you commenting as an NCP scholar or are you commenting as Sam Chung? You know, nobody in the world will get along with everybody in the world. Fact, like you, you can't be friends with everyone. What people align with most is people who are prepared to stand up for what they believe in, okay? So 
my personal view is that if you have a position on an issue, you should state it because that will attract like people who will then become part of your professional audience, so to speak. That's very different though if you're undertaking anything which is in a formal capacity, for example, as an NCP scholar or as an ambassador for a company or as an influencer on Instagram. Like, yeah, of course that comes with requirements. But there's, there are ways to handle that depending on what your commitments are. But you should always be okay about standing up for what you believe in. Uh, Carolyn, what do you think about how we navigate nav cocktail and networking evenings that companies run? Now, I'm not sure if you're meaning like professional, um, you know, professional networking event run by a company that just does networking events or whether you, um, uh, when, whether you're talking about like it's KPMG and you're going to their networking event. So, um, my th thought on networking is that you should seek to uh, seek first to listen and understand rather than to speak. So listen with the intent to understand. That's all networking should be. Um, and that anytime you walk into a room, and like you might not believe it, but I'm I'm a bit of an introvert. I normally go into like these things, and I'm kind of like, oh, like oh, this is not. I don't like this at all. Um, what gets me through that barrier is being curious. I'm like, oh, there's there's somebody over there. Oh, Carol uh, hi, Carolyn, I'm Rob. Like, what do you do? And asking more questions than get asked of you. So always listening with the intent to understand, not listening with the intent to make a comment behind because that's most of what most people are doing and it's kind of boring, right? Always nicer to listen with the intent to understand. Only networking tip that I have. There's lots of people talking about a job, how a job will benefit them. Oh, yeah. So this is a really good point. So thanks, Moraine. Um, it's amazing to have a good producer who's got your back. Um, work is always a two-way equation, right? Um, yes, a lot of you guys have asked questions about, well, what's the company going to do for you? But remember, or the organization, you've got to give something to the organization too, outside of your time. So it's always this kind of two-way torsion between like what you get out of the the organization and what the organization gets out of you. And it's got a balance. Um, you know, like right now we're seeing a great example of it. Businesses don't have money because of coronavirus. They're going to close. Like happen, happen to us. Successful business, gone. And it's not because we didn't want to like keep it open. It wasn't that we didn't want to protect our stuff. We couldn't. We just couldn't. And so sometimes when your company says, guys, you're going to have to work back late. We really need it right now. Like, yeah, you've got to do that because you've got to protect the company the way that the company should also protect you. So yeah, it's always like tension. Oh, no, here we go. Okay, Lisa, we're definitely going to connect. You've done a great job. Thank you for your participation. In fact, thank you everybody for being so amazing and participating because honestly, how many crap sessions have you been to this year, right? Live streaming, like, oh, God, I fall asleep, like TikTok, like, you know. But but half of the equation is you guys, and you guys participating and responding to each other. That's amazing. So thank you so much. Um, actually, there's a good question. Um, before I get down to the current ones, Brandon, are master's programs still a good way to get ahead? Such a good question. Um, master's programs are expensive. You know, like minimum buy-in, 40K probably, 30, 40, 50K. Um, what is the ROI? And the ROI might be like, you're going to get new skills. Um, yeah, maybe there's skills in a master's program that you cannot get anywhere else. And spending that like 50K or 60 or 100 is a great investment of the money. Um, maybe it's connections. Maybe you just need a piece of paper. Honestly, like when I started my master's degree, like, I was like, oh, I want a master's. Like one day I would love to have a master's. So I just started a master's degree um, because I just kind of wanted a master's. Um, so yeah, that was a good investment for me. Um, it depends on your purpose. Um, the main thing with a resume is that it's, it's, it's less about what's on there as the story that you tell about it. So if you have bounced between six different jobs, 
are people going to look at that resume and be like, ugh, looks a bit flaky. I don't know if I'll hire them. Maybe. Unless you can tell a compelling story about why that was a logical progression for you. Like first company was full of nutcases. Second company was awesome, but it folded. Third company, um, short-term contract, and I overachieved on results. And then they recommended me to the fourth company. You know what I mean? Like you can thread your story to make it make sense. Lisa, how do you achieve consistency in personal branding when you shift industries, organizations, and roles? Be honest. Like tell your truth. Just tell your truth. Um, If you have got values, like Sam's question earlier, like, okay, you've got an opinion on the Black Lives Matter issue. State it. Be proud. You know, if, if an organization doesn't align with that, good. You know it up front. You're not going to waste your time being in there. So um, be consistent with your values and who you are. That, that stuff carries across industries. It's not, it's not limited, if that makes sense. And roles. Like, you, you, you're building, remember, build, build a wall. Don't build a sandcastle. If you have, geez, like, I'm the student mobility guy, right? Like, um, been doing this for 20 years and the company's just folded. Like, now I'm going to do something new. I don't know what that's going to be. But I'm not going back to the beginning. I'm building on top of whatever it is I've already built, even if it ends up being something completely different, okay? So you're always building a wall. Um, and sticking to your values means it's a wall, not a sandcastle, because it's always going to be consistent. Uh, Audrey, is there a better option between either going for a graduate program or going straight for an entry level role? Depends what you're applying for um, and what you hope to get out to it. Sorry? Depends on long term goal. Yeah, it, it depends. It, Marion's just saying depends on your goal. Um, absolutely depends on your goal. And that's why the very first thing, if you do nothing else, the 95 of you guys who are still here, if you do nothing else but take that 30 minutes to be like, huh, what do I want? Like, do I want the money or do I want like to meet lots of people or, you know, do I really want to be an ambassador one day? Like pick a couple of things because what happens, and that was Maureen's analogy about driving the car. You put that thing off in the, off in the distance and you're looking at it all the time. Like it's in the back of your head and you're just steering towards it and things will naturally take you in that direction. And then, you know, sometimes you'll get sidetracked. That's Okay. If the, if the goal holds, you'll always come back to it. There's no such thing as a straight path. It doesn't exist. Uh, Alexandra, good question. Like if you did the thing about Asana, um, would, you, would you not be able to create one for another company? Why couldn't you? As long as it's authentic. I, I had a video about authenticity that, that I was thinking about putting in, but it was already getting too long, right? You've just got to be authentic, right? Like um, I love Social Media Examiner. I've done videos about them because I love the company. Um, but I've also done videos about Entreport, uh, which is which is a company I also love. Um, is there a conflict between that? No, it's two things that I like, so it's okay to like more than one thing. Um, the, and I think it's that you need to be careful that you're not you're trying to leverage what you know what you can here. You're trying to be, make yourself mentally available. You're you're trying to set yourself in the most positive light. Um, and if you're only serving that to the relevant audience and it's authentic, you can keep serving that to different people, right? Um, honestly, you do something like that video, I, who wouldn't hire you? How do you talk about soft skills you believe are important in a resume without it sounding flaky? Honest truth, like when you're straight out of uni or you're earlier in your career, like there's, there's not that much depth to it. That's just the reality. Um, you know, you can only make uni assignments and group work sound so so deep you know what i mean so don't pretend that it's anything other than what it is um just 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 be honest like this is what i've done this is what i've learned um i know there's going to be far more challenging situations that i'm going to encounter but here are some of the other things that i've done that that have set me up for that um it's not trying to make something small sound bigger than it really is um and, and be okay with that, guys. Like if you're in your early 20s and you've got limited experience, you've only just finished your degree, that is okay. It's called life. Fantastic. Marine's just yelled out like extracurricular activities are, are, are a fantastic way like to reflect your skills and values as well. So what other things are you involved in? Um, and if you're not involved in very much, then think about what maybe you could get involved in because it's good for you anyway. All of that will help broaden your mind 
which makes you, it easy to pick a clear goal, if that makes sense. Um, actually, I'll tell you a story about that. Um, the reason I'm sitting here with you guys today is because I missed out on a job promotion. Um, I was working at Macquarie University back in the early 2000s. I was a student mobility guy and um, my boss's role became free and I found out through the grapevine that somebody else had been tapped on the shoulder for the job and I wasn't even going to be interviewed for it. And I was pissed, like pissed, because I was like, this is so unfair. I've been basically doing a lot of that job. I could easily step up. I've got, you know, I'm going to be awesome at it. Like, this is so unfair. And uh, so I went in and I resigned. I like went to my boss and I was like, I'm out of here. See, like, this sucks. My boss was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, hang on a second. Like, don't, don't just, what's going on? And so I told her, like, I know you're going to give this job to someone else. Um, so pff, I'm out. And she was like, I don't want you to quit. Like, we don't want this to end this way. You're great at what you do. Like, take a week to think about it. And that was one of the best things that I got to do is that I went home and I was really angry and um, I was living at Manly at the time and I went down to the beach and I walked along the rocks and I had a big old walk and a big old think and I thought, it was a bit of like, fuck you in it too. I was like, if, if I'm going to stay in this job, it's so that I can be the best at it. Like I'm going to be the best person in Australia at it. Nothing is going to stand in my way. Like I'm going to do my very best to be the person. And so I made a conscious choice in that moment that that would be my end point. And it, it, it's happened, right? Not necessarily because every day I thought about, oh, I need to build my profile and put, no, but just because like I decided that this was meaningful enough for me as a work, work that I would commit to it. So if you find that in your life, you're very lucky and you can double down on it. If you don't, that's okay too. Like, just keep focusing on the positive things in the future that you want to aim towards. And at some point, hopefully that, that slips out of the shadows. And if it doesn't, you're still gonna have a great life because you've always followed what you wanted to do, even if it wasn't like super specific like me, be a mobility guy. When creating, should I go for attention grabbing funny or go the professional route? Bin Bin San. Such a good question. Like, should you go funny or should you go professional? It depends is the answer. If you're applying for something in government, then doing something running around in your underpants down the main road of Sydney is like a really bad idea. <laughs> so it, it depends. You know, like with the Asana one, um, I, I read a little bit about the company and because we used their product, we knew their product and I liked their product and their company already, I... I already knew that they were a company that would appreciate something a little bit unique, a little bit quirky. And so that's why the video came out the way it was. But if it was something more serious, um, then we would have had to do something with a different tone. But remember that the person who will hire you is a human being. Human beings love to be entertained. They like to learn for the most part. Um, and then everybody has different biases. Some people want security, some people want fast pace. So the more you can know about the people that you're interacting with, the better. Um, so my advice would be don't guess. Go and find out, do your research. If there's a company you really wanna go into, look at their values, find people in the company and talk to them. Um, and then you will know more accurately what you're looking for. Maybe the CEO just happens to like, like, Kenneth Cole shoes, right? Like, probably not. But, but, but maybe. Like, if you find out that little vignette of information and you make a funny little video about um, Kenneth Cole shoes, is that going to speak to the CEO? Yeah, probably. So know your audience. That was one of the steps, right? Know your audience and what they want and what's in it for them. How do we balance between producing content that's genuine and professional? Yeah, we've just talked about that. So it's same, same, same. Um, strike balance between posting content that's relevant to employers and being consistent with the fact that we as graduates aren't experts in many subject matters. How do they know? How do they know that you're not an expert? How do they know that you haven't done three courses over a year and a half of uni and you know more about a particular subject than they do? They don't know. They don't know who you are. And honestly, actually, here's a piece of truth. Um, they probably don't care. Like most people don't care about the, all the details in the background. Like we're all so stuck in our own story 
about how important we are. Like, oh, this is my book, right? Like, this is the story about me, and everyone's going to read every page. And no, 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 nobody gives a shit, right? Like, they give, they care about the surface details. Most people that you come across in your life, this is sad but true, will only ever look at like the surface details. So, if what you put on the surface is authoritative and it's consistent, you will be an expert. End of story. Disagree? Disagree? No. Agree. Okay. Uh, maximum number of experiences we should have on our resume. At what point into full-time positions do we start deleting internships? As soon as they're not relevant anymore. I mean, if, if you're applying for a job at Asana and you did project management at uni, you might still keep that on your resume up to a point. Like it, it kind of depends. If the experience is relevant, you can keep it there. But also remember, people's like the amount of stuff that people read is super short. Um, it's up to you to explain your story. So if something is relevant, bring it up. Um, one of the things that I um, still regularly bring up is in the last year of my master's, I studied full-time and worked full-time in the last six months. So I was doing four master's courses and was working full-time. So I had a crazy workload. And in the last seven weeks of my master's, I had seven 4,000-word assignments due in seven weeks. So in that seven weeks, I learned how to turn around a 4,000-word research paper from start to finish, like blank page, no research, to finish product on a Sunday evening in a week whilst working full-time. I can tell you what, like what I learned about the ability to research fast, to cur curate notes, and then to get those into a logical order and to flesh it out, like that is the best skill that I've learned in terms of being able to do that kind of work. I learned that when I was 20, I'm now 40, okay? Completely relevant to where I am now because there's a narrative around it. So maximum number of experiences? No maximum, they are your experiences, you should own them, and you should tell the story that is most compelling to the person you're trying to convince. If I'm involved with a political party, would it be a good idea to list that on a resume as an example or experience, or would that be a bad move? That depends what you want, Ruben. If you want to meet more people who are like you, then yes, you should list it. Because remember the idea of tribe. We love to put on badges. Oh man. Yeah. Look at my laptop. I am badged up to my freaking eyeballs, right? Social media examiner, entreport, asana. Like you can see which tribes I belong to. And what does this do? If I'm sitting there in a, in a cafe, tapping away, someone's like, oh, you're part of the Social Media Marketing Society. I'm like, yes, I am. Like, instant connection. Would you miss that otherwise? Yes. So you should be okay about being able to state your truth unless, unless it's something that potentially impacts you negatively. It depends on you. If, if you're worried about um, upsetting people and you're worried about disillusioning half the population, <laughs> then maybe don't do it. Marine's just saying like, you'll have more interesting conversations if you are open to meeting people who are different to you. And I fundamentally agree with that. Like, I think you should be okay about stating, stating your truth and, um, uh, and being open to meeting other people. So just don't judge. So I see one from Binmin Sam, it's work experience from high school that's related to field and is from a prestigious company. Is that relevant and credible for a graduate job? Absolutely. I can tell you something. There's not a huge number of people in high school who are going out there and already curating different types of experiences like work or internships. So yes, you should show that. Like, remember, you're early in your career. You know, like nobody expects you to have a PhD. Congratulations if you do. Um, and and to and to you know to have ten years of project management experience. It's not expected. Those are not the roles that you're going to win. So be be proud of your story and own your story the good the bad the ugly odin awesome to see you i'll take one more question if anybody has another question i'm more than happy to take one more otherwise thank you this has been, been a lot of fun and uh, voice coming from my producer massive respect to my producer because you can't do what you do without having amazing people around you. And um, speaking of that, Maureen was not only co-founded the two companies that we've run together, but has been the CEO. Um, and you know, whilst I've been a lot more active and in front and people know and see me, it's important to have the, the really strong people and the good leaders um, 
that support you with what you do. So uh, incredible and thank you. Last question, Brandon, thank you. If any, any more time, I'm worried about taking time for travel after uni and in between jobs. Can I explain? <laughs> okay, such a great question. Nobody gives a shit on your resume if you took a gap year and went traveling. You are free to do so. In fact, anyone that's worth working for, in my view, will understand that you will learn more in that year, backpacking, volunteering, doing whatever it is that you do. You will learn more about yourself and about the world than in any grad position, than in any first year out in a job. So go do that. And, it, and, and it will never be easier. You will never have um, a better opportunity where you have freedom you, <laughs> and you're happy to sleep on the floor in train stations. You know what I mean? Like once you have an income, you're like, fuck that. I, I need a bed to sleep in. I need to sleep in an Airbnb. When you're backpacking, you don't care. You do whatever. You, you sleep on the train. It's fine. Your tolerance is high. Go do that. Enjoy it. Okay. Amazing, guys. Thank you so much for your time. This has been a lot of fun. Let's do it again sometime, yeah? Um, if, if you haven't already done so, um, I would really love a uh, testimonial. Please, 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 please. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. Have yourself a wonderful weekend.